Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we have a pretty awesome little projector for you guys. So in the last video we have checked out the DLP P6 mini projector and that is this thing right here. Uh, it was pretty awesome. It had a really bright projector light and the resolution was okay. It's not the best but it did get the job done for its size. And basically it had three main ways of getting content on it. One was using AirPlay or Miracast which this thing did support so you can do with Apple, with Android or even Windows. You can pretty much project your Windows computer uh, through the Wi-Fi network and yes it did have 5 GHz Wi-Fi. The other two ways were actually one using the SD card slot that is right here and the other one was to use an OTG cable using a USB flash drive and that was actually about it. The resolution for this thing is 84 something by something something I'll just put it right here and the battery life wasn't the best you get maximum an hour to two hours depending on what you do with it but we have now something much better. But it has one main really awesome feature and that would be a built-in Android OS. And hopefully it will get a bigger battery life and have more inputs to display content on. Anyways, without further ado, let's unbox this awesome little projector and let's get right into it. So this is the H96P and in the next video we're actually going to be taking a look at another projector that has Android OS and this thing is actually a 720p projector. It is awesome. It's not portable but it's so small it's insane. But we're going to be taking a look at that in the next video. Anyways, this is what we have here. Uh, this is what you get in the box. So you get a nice little pouch. It's a nylon pouch and it feels high quality. And then we get the projector itself, which we'll take a look at in just a bit here. And then we get two goodie boxes or one big massive collection of stuff. So first of all, we get the expected remote control. That would allow us to control the Android OS, I believe. And we'll take a look at that in just a bit. And you can see that it has an air mouse function or a pointer. But inside of here, it runs off to AAA batteries and it seems like it has a USB dongle. So that's pretty interesting. We're gonna see how that is incorporated. So I guess you just gotta plug that into the projector itself and you might be able to use it on other stuff too. Next up, we get the AC adapter that is running five volts at 2.5 amps and it uses this type of plug. So this is what you use to charge this thing or have it plugged in permanently and enjoy stuff on it. Then we have the usual cheapo tripod, which does get the job done. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is a lightweight projector, but we're going to see how this one does. And it seems like that is the maximum height that it could reach. And this is a ball head, so you can rotate it and project it and adjust it to however you like it to. And finally, we get a quick start guide, manual, some warranty stuff, and an HDMI cable, which is actually pretty promising. And this is not any HDMI cable. This is a full-sized HDMI cable. And that is really, really awesome, especially coming from a mini projector. So let's put that aside and finally take a look at the projector itself. Here we go. And one more. So check out this little beauty. Now it says 4K Ultra HD. It supports 4K input, but it's not going to project 4K on your wall or on your projector screen. So it does support 4K input, but yeah, let's take a look at what we have here. So we have a nice shiny surface and on top of here, we got a permanent logo. And obviously right over here, we have the touch control. So these all should light up once we turn it on. Now, if we take a look at the sides here, we got a ton of things going on. So let's see what we have here. First of all, we have the full size HDMI port, which once again is amazing on a projector this size. And then we have the AC in adapter, two full size USB 2.0 ports, the on off switch, and if you look at the front here, we get the projector lens itself. You can see how small it is. We got some ventilation holes. And on the left side, we got the lens adjustments over here, an LED indicator, and a mini SD card slot. And finally, if you take a look at the back here, we got a headphone jack. And on the bottom, we have the standard tripod mount and a little thing that can pop up like that to raise the projector if you have it on a flat surface like this. And of course, more ventilation holes and whatnot, and we'll see if it has speaker or not. Now, this thing has two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, and that is actually pretty awesome. Once again, it has a built-in Android OS. Uh, I believe it was Android 5.1, but the information will be right here, so there you go. But yeah, let's go ahead, power it on, and see what we have here. All right, so I tried to power it on, but it was actually out of battery. So I hooked it up to the power supply. So it is now hooked up and set up on this new tripod that I got just for this occasion. And I've also loaded this controller with some fresh new batteries. So let's go ahead, power it on and see what kind of result we can get from this thing. And later on, we're actually going to be going and comparing it to the Peak 6. First of all, if you guys can see that, it has an LED indicator indicating that it is charging. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in right here. So of course, since this thing is tiny, it's going to have produced some heat, which will result in a fan spinning to cool it down. That's normal. All projectors do that. Again, this is a tiny projector. Even the P6 over there did it. But um, this is the introduction screen. Basically, it's loading the Android OS. Let me just uh, adjust this right here. And there we go. I would say a pretty decent looking Android screen. And right there, you can see the top right corner. It is charging. So right now it's 2%. Uh, showing you the date and time. And it's, it's Android. I mean, what else do you want? It's Android and it's got all the functions they need. And uh, the boot up times, as you guys saw, it's about 15 to 20 seconds or so. But let's see what the top controls here can do. 
So we should be able to control this OS. Yep, there we go. We can control it using the top controls. And let me show you guys what this looks like. So the controls are right here, and if you press them, they light up in red, which is really, really cool. And of course, we get the menu button, we get the back button, up, down, left, right, and OK. All right, we are back, and I have set up this thing where I installed my applications, logged into Google, set up the Wi-Fi, tried Bluetooth, tried the USB port, tried the SD card. The performance on this thing is actually much better than some Android TV boxes that I have experienced before. Now, of course, those are running 1080p, and this thing is running a resolution that is under 720p, so that is to be expected. But nonetheless, the experience on this Android OS is absolutely smooth, buttery smooth, without any issues, for the most part. I'll explain later. Wi-Fi speeds, very nice, absolutely fantastic. Installed the apps very quickly that I needed. Video playback also works very nicely. I have played a 4K video and it works very nicely on the SD card. And uh, gaming performance is also fantastic. Uh, we'll show you guys in just a bit. Real Racing and Asphalt 8. And the performance is pretty damn good. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing is uh, battery life. So battery life I'm currently testing out and I won't be putting the battery life in this video. It will be in the description once I do finish testing out the battery life. I do want to get this video out quickly as I can. So battery life is pretty good so far. I'm not too sure. I've been spending time installing apps and whatnot. So with that said, uh, let's talk about the AC adapter here. So basically when you hook this up, the fan speeds will actually ramp up to an even higher speed. And that is to keep this thing cool while charging and using the device at the same time. So when you remove this thing, the fan RPM actually lowers itself to go back to normal uh, when you're not charging it. So that's cool. Couple more things I have actually tested out with this controller right here, the GameStore 4S, it's a fantastic game controller. And I've also tested out with this uh, remote control and it has an air mouse function as well as a full size keyboard right there, they're all backlit. So totally recommend checking those out. And I've also tested it out with this Bluetooth headset from Ludio, the F2 series. I've also tested out this Bluetooth speaker from Xiaomi and tested out casting something off my phone. And lastly, of course, we're going to hook it up to this laptop through HDMI and see what it looks like. So right now, in my opinion, this is the most optimal way to set this thing up. Right now, I have it about 44 inches away from the screen from the projector light itself. With that distance, you'll get about a 42 to 43 inch display. And that is where I think is the best sweet spot for this projector in terms of visual quality and brightness, but mostly brightness levels are what I am looking for. So 43 inches, a pretty good size, as well as a pretty good amount of light. And that is with my room being lit with that backlight right there and with my bright displays right here. So as you guys can see, it's actually not bad. It's pretty good. If you guys are wondering what it looks like in real life, let me adjust my camera settings. You'll get something about this. Of course, it's going to depend on your computer screen or your phone or whatever, where you're viewing this. Uh, you can expect this kind of brightness, but let's take it back here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at the interface and the current installed applications for this thing. So right now, all the applications that I have installed are on the bottom right there. So the interface itself here is actually pretty nice, and I really like how it looks compared to other TV boxes. So on the top right corner, you got the battery life indicator and the charging indicator, obviously. It tells me the percentage, which is good. Right under it has the time and date. And on the top left corner, you got the indicators for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB, and SD card. Then right under it, you got Netflix, YouTube, and Google Play, which is something that is absolutely awesome about this thing. Then you got the built-in video app, which does work, but I recommend using VLC if you want or something else, like MX Player. Then you got WPS Office, that is obviously if you are using this for school or presentations or work. Uh, you can just hook up a flash drive or a USB and uh, view your documents right on this thing using the built-in OS and this app, of course. Then you got the HDMI in, which we'll be testing out with my laptop. Then we got settings, which we'll be taking a look at in just a bit. We got favorites, that's where you can add your custom favorites apps. And you got a built-in browser and, of course, the app drawer. And this is just a regular app drawer. It's very nice. Everything is large and viewable and readable. And finally, on the bottom here, we got 12 places where you can set up your own custom app launcher. So, so you can make shortcuts to your favorite apps on the bottom here, and you got 12 of them that you could set up very easily. You go all the way down here, select the app that you want, and you're good to go. Very simple UI, and it works very nicely with the remote and the built-in controls on the projector itself. One thing if you notice here, we actually have a built-in super user, which means this thing is already rooted. Not only that, we can also get some updates, and also has Crypt and Cody already installed on this thing. So this thing actually has two different settings menus. One of them is this one right here. This one is set up in a way so it is easier to use and quicker to access. And of course, it does have some settings that the real Android menus does not have. For example, setting up the projector screen and the angle and whatnot. And we'll take a look at that in just a bit. But yeah, what you see here is pretty much what you'll be getting. And it has everything that you really need when using something like this. Yeah, your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, your accounts, and all that good stuff. 
And to enter the real settings menu, you go to more settings and you get this settings menu, which is the usual one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Android OS. On the main page, it actually claimed that it had Android 5.1, but it seems like they actually went ahead and updated this thing with Android 6.0.1, which is really awesome. And so this thing is pretty up to date, I gotta say. And finally, let me show you something really cool about this projector that really blew me away when I was readjusting my camera and accidentally hit the tripod of the projector itself. So, so let's move this camera right here and show you what happens when I kick, for example, or hit the tripod. You see that the projector actually wobbles, the screen itself wobbles. Now you'd be wondering why. Well, let me show you this really cool feature. So if you take a look at the projector at a normal height and level, you can see that it is normal. Now if I tilt it downwards, you can see that the projector automatically attempts to fix and adapt to the angle itself so you can get the best viewing angle. Now, of course, it's not the best. If you're gonna be setting this thing up on a permanent kind of setup, um, you can go ahead and do it manually instead of having it automatically done. So we can turn off the auto keystone model. That's what we just saw. And we can also have auto rotate. So if I flip this over upside down, let me go ahead and try that out. Yep, there we go. Instantly flips over the display, so that's cool. And of course, you get the usual settings of rotate and whatnot here, and obviously the manual override for uh, skewing the image to get the best looking result. So that's what it looks like if you do it manually for a permanent kind of setup. So that's pretty much it for the UI. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It is very snappy, very quick, and there's nothing left to do, but go ahead and see what the performance is like, see what the audio quality looks like, and what video playback looks like on this thing. So let's go ahead and roll the video. All right, so getting started with Netflix here, uh, you can see the interface is pretty dark, so things are not gonna look as good as they should be. But let's go ahead and try to play something like Narcos and see. Uh, I did update the app on Netflix because initially it did not work, but it seems like now it is actually working after updating it. Now, you cannot update it through Google Play. Uh, for some reason, Google Play doesn't think this device is compatible. So I just went ahead and downloaded the APK online from Google and updated the app here, and now it works perfectly fine. So before the video was not playing, but now it plays instantly without any problems. But you can see that things are kind of too dark. So that is what it looks like with the lights completely off. It's not the worst, the resolution is okay, but I would have liked more brightness when it comes to the display here. Moving on to YouTube, uh, they have the YouTube TV app installed. It's kind of an older version, but it does work very nicely with a remote without using the pointer. But this is what it looks like. Again, the interface is dark, so it's not gonna look the best. And the best content is obviously gonna be the bright type of content. So this is what it looks like. And you guys can listen that the audio quality is pretty horrible. If you want to have a okay experience, lower the volume, don't put it on high because if you do, it's going to just screech and your ears are going to hurt. Here's what Google Play looks like. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So you can see that the Netflix app is actually not here. If you want to update your app, you got to go and install an APK, but that's fine. No issues whatsoever here. Now moving on to Crunchyroll, another streaming app that is popular for anime. So let's see what the uh, performance is like. And it's best viewed using the large thumbnail, so that's what it looks like. And right now I'm using the remote control without using the pointer. So let's go ahead and play something and see what it looks like here. So that's what Netflix, YouTube, and Crunchyroll looks like on this thing. Uh, the best content would be anime because all the colors are even and they're usually bright colors. So everything is easy to see and uh, subtitles are very readable and legible, so that's good. Now moving on to gaming and heavy applications, let's go ahead and get started with the worst uh, performance and I'll show you why it's worst. So right now I'm using a controller and uh, let's see what the performance is like when it comes to games like this one. And honestly, for what this thing is, it's not bad. Now, why do I say this is a bad performer? Well, let me show you when I connect a Bluetooth controller. And as you guys can hear, with this game specifically, only this game, if you connect a Bluetooth speaker, you'll get some uh, echoey noises. So really, that game is not a bad performer. It just has a problem with Bluetooth speakers. But Asphalt 8, which is a heavy game, and most phones actually have problems running this thing, it plays very nicely on this projector. So. Let me show you. So as you guys can see, I'm still connected to the Xiaomi Bluetooth speaker and the game is still performing very nicely and the sound levels are pretty nice. There's no distortion and again, the game is performing absolutely flawlessly, I would say. Okay. 
So one thing I did notice about this projector, you'll notice in some colors like green or purple, the colors are just way oversaturated. But yeah, it's something to keep note of. Sega! And of course, the last thing to do is run some retro games. So here I got my phone and now it is connecting. Uh, it's uh, flawless, there's no issues whatsoever when it comes to Miracast. And I've also tested it with a Samsung phone and again, no issues whatsoever, it's pretty flawless. So here's what the performance looks like. It's actually not bad, so that is to be expected on what it looks like. Basically, everything works as intended. For example, if I go to Google Play now and rotate my phone, there we go, now we have a full screen of my phone. So I could just quickly present whatever I'm showing to my friends or family or at work or at school and just pretty much show my PowerPoint straight from my phone wirelessly without having to connect any cables and pretty much manually control it right from here. So that's pretty cool. And lastly, let's go ahead and try out the HDMI port. So to do that, you basically navigate to the HDMI in section, you click OK, and then just like that, the screen comes up and it's mirrored. Now, if you want, you can have it as a separate screen, which you could do. So let's go ahead and try that out and see what kind of resolution it will offer us. So let's change it from duplicate to extend these displays. And now if we go up, we can see the other display and it's showing as a 1360 by 768 resolution, which it's not. But if you're wondering, the resolution here can go all the way up to 1920 by 1080. But really what it projects here is under 720p, but that is about it. So also the response time, if you guys are wondering, it's actually really good. There's actually very minimal latency. It's actually less latency than the Xiaomi TV that I've actually reviewed previously, which is impressive. And that's it. Now, if you're wondering how close you can get with this projector, well, let me show you. And pretty much the closest focusing distance that I could do is about three inches, which is pretty impressive. And now if you're wondering how far, how big he can get of a screen, well, let me show you here. Well, you can go into the 300 inch area. I mean, you can pretty much fill up this whole wall with an image if you really wanted. So let me focus that. There we go. And you can see that this whole wall, it's about 12 feet in length. It's, uh, it's pretty much covering the whole wall. That's my 32 inch screen right there. You can see it. And that's how big the projector can get. It can pretty much cover this whole giant wall. And of course, you're not limited to walls. You can do it on the ground or, of course, on the ceiling. And you can just lay in bed or do camping or whatever and enjoy content. So yeah, I think that about covers everything about this thing. All right, so the conclusion. What do I think about this thing and is it worth its money? Well, right now it's actually on sale for $180 US, uh, free shipping. And for that price, what you're getting in here is absolutely insane. For a portable mini projector that can power itself and has a built-in Android OS and all the functions that it has, including a built-in HDMI port full size and the USB ports and the remote and pretty much everything about this thing is phenomenal. I mean, it's got performance, it's got function, and it's got all the type of inputs that you'd ever want from a mini projector like this one. It's even got an SD card slot, which is pretty awesome. You can have a closer, nicer screen with more brightness and better colors, or you can get a larger screen depending on how many people you have and whatnot. So in terms of function and price, you are getting way more than this guy right here. This thing was awesome back then. I did notice it does have a bit more brightness to it, but this is way more worth it when it comes to function. Again, you got all these crazy inputs and it's got that awesome built-in Android OS, where this one doesn't really have anything. It only has an SD card, a USB, and the rest is done wireless, where there's lag and, you know, it heats up. So each of them have their uses, but I would definitely go for this one if you're looking for a mini projector. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. So if you guys are interested in this thing or the accessories that I have shown here, I'll leave links for those in the description below. And if you're looking for a more refined, permanent experience with a higher resolution and a brighter display, hopefully, then stay tuned for this video for this thing. It's going to be really awesome. And that is pretty much it for this video. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.